Hello everyone, my name is Loren Hanna, and today we'll be talking about semiotics. Semiotics, by definition, is the study of signs and symbols and their use or interpretation. Before we dive into semiotics, let's learn about a couple key theorists. Ferdinand de Saussure is one of the two founders of semiotics. Saussure was a Swiss linguist who is responsible for creating the sign signifier signified concept, which we will get into shortly. The second founder of semiotics is Charles Saunders Peirce, an American philosopher who is responsible for creating the we only think in signs concept, where anything is considered a sign as long as someone interprets it as having meaning other than itself. Semiotics deals with concrete examples such as physical signs and more abstract concepts such as denotation and connotation. We'll begin this quick lesson with signs. Signs are broken down into two parts, signifiers and the signified. Signifiers are the physical forms of a sign, such as a sound, word, or image that create a communication. Let's go over an example together, and then you can try one on your own. When we look at this image, the signifier is the sound of the spoken word or string of letters. In this case, we read this as Facebook. Now it's your turn. What is the physical form of this sign? What is the sound, word, or image creating communication? If you said MTV, music television, you're absolutely right. To an older generation, MTV might mean music videos running all day, but to another generation, it may mean reality and competition shows. These different meanings of a sign bring us to the signified. The signified is the concept that a signifier refers to. Let's go back to our original example. What concepts come to mind when you see this image? For some, it may be social media. Others may think of friends, family, or entertainment. Now, signifiers can be categorized into three different types of signs, icons, symbols, and indexes. An icon has a physical resemblance to the signified. For example, when we see this photo, what comes to mind? A mustache, right? Well, what if I show you this picture? Are you still able to recognize the mustache? Yes. Even though it looks different from the first one, its physical resemblance let us know that it's still a mustache. A symbol is the opposite of an icon, so it does not resemble the signifier that is being represented. Symbols are learned culturally, which explains why cultures can develop different and unique traits. We learn what symbols mean over time. A common example of a symbol is the male and female icons representing the presence of toilet facilities. Let's imagine we had never seen humans before and we're told that this is what a woman and a man look like. We probably wouldn't infer then that this woman and man were in fact of the same species. Lastly, we have indexes. An index describes the physical connection between a signifier and the signified. This means that the signifier cannot exist without the physical presence of the signified. Let's look at an example of this concept. Smoke cannot exist without fire. Within this example, the signifier is smoke, which leads to the signified being fire. If we saw a big cloud of black smoke in the distance, the concept that typically comes to mind is that it's coming from a fire. Now that we understand the basics of signs, let's talk about denotation and connotation. Denotation is the literal meaning of a word. Think about it in dictionary terms. So for example, dog. A dog is defined as a domesticated carnivorous mammal 
that typically has a long snout, an acute sense of smell, and a barking, howling, or whining voice. Connotation represents the various social overtones, cultural implications, or emotional meanings associated with a sign. For example, if I show a group of people this photo of a dog, to one person it may invoke a happy memory of a much-loved pet, while another person may be remembering being chased by a dog and possibly feeling scared. Now that we've gone over the key terms of semiotics, let's analyze a few images. Here we have a sign representing a well-known company. Take a moment to identify the signifier. If you said Forever 21, you're correct. Remember, the signifier is the form the sign or the word takes. What's the signified? The signified will vary depending on who you are and where you are. Did you say fashion, clothes? Either of these are correct. How can we identify the denotation? If you said a dictionary definition, you are right. Forever 21 is an American chain of fast fashion retailers with its headquarters in Los Angeles. Lastly, what is the connotation? To some, it may be cute, fashionable clothes. To others, it may mean inexpensive and cheaply made clothes. Great job. Let's test your knowledge of semiotics a little more. Next, I'll be showing you an image and you'll identify whether it's an icon, symbol, or index. Take a moment and analyze this photo. Are the footprints in the snow an icon, symbol, or index? If you said index, you're correct. The footprints cannot exist without a person stepping through the snow. What is the signified in this photo? If you said someone walking in snow, you're correct again. Lastly, what would be the signifier? If you said the footprints, you're absolutely right. Great work. Let's look at another image. Is this image a representation of an icon, symbol, or index? If you said symbol, you're correct. This simple figure does not resemble the signifier that is being represented. In this case, a home, which in reality can look like this, this, or even this. You're doing great. Let's try a couple more. Are we looking at an icon, symbol, or index? If you said icon, you're correct. This icon has a physical resemblance to the signified. Remember the mustache example? Similarly, its physical resemblance to the icon let us know it's indeed a bicycle. Amazing work. Let's try one more. Icon, symbol, or index. If you said symbol, you're right again. The American flag represents the United States of America, but it is not how our country actually looks. Now that we've gone over various aspects of signs, let's close this lesson with test examples of denotation and connotation. Let's analyze this photo. If I state words like peace, tranquility, gentleness, harmony, is this the denotation or connotation of the symbol? It is the connotation of the symbol. Remember that connotation represents the various social overtones, cultural implications, or emotional meanings associated with a sign. Let's look at this photo. If I state that this is the round fruit of a tree, which typically has thin red or green skin and crisp flesh, am I giving the denotation or connotation of the symbol? It is the denotation or dictionary definition of the word apple. The apple is sitting on books atop a desk with a blackboard in the back, which can convey a connotation of education. Great job. Hopefully you understand a little more about semiotics and all its basics. 
Semiotics is important because it can help us not to take reality for granted as something having a purely objective existence, which is independent of human interpretation. It teaches us that reality is a system of signs. Studying semiotics can assist us to become more aware of reality as a construction and of the roles played by ourselves and others in constructing it. Feel free to go back and rewatch any parts you didn't get a good enough grasp on. Try and think of your own examples of signs you see around you every day. Again, my name is Loren Hanna. Thank you for watching.